Hey guys, today I'm going to be taking you through 11 of my favorite Ableton Live 11 workflow tips. Okay, tip number one. If you wanted to open up all these channels, you could do it one by one, or you can hold Alt and click this button over here to expand or collapse all channels or groups. Okay, tip number two, to insert empty space into your timeline, simply highlight a section of it and hit Control I. And to delete that space, you can hit Control Shift Delete. Tip number four, to resume playback from a specific point in your MIDI clip, you can click to place a marker and then hold Control and Spacebar. You can also play back specific notes by highlighting those notes you want to play and holding Control and Space. Tip number six, to quickly rename multiple channels, you can hit Control R on your first channel, name it, and then simply hit Tab to jump to the next one and you can rename that one. Okay, tip number seven. Let's say you had this dotted note rhythm here, but you wanted to turn this into an eighth note rhythm. Typically, I would be taking each MIDI note and reducing its length manually, and then highlighting it and then duplicating it out so that we have an eighth note rhythm. A quicker way to do that would be to highlight all your notes and grab this MIDI stretch marker and just reduce it down until you have eighth notes. Tip number eight, velocity automation. Let's say we wanted to automate the velocity of these notes so that they go from quiet to loud. The long way to do this would be to manually adjust each note. The fast way is to highlight all the notes, hit B on your keyboard to bring up the draw tool, hold control on your keyboard, and then click and draw the curve that you want. Tip number nine, you can use shift and spacebar to resume playback from your pause point. Okay, tip number 10, you can use Z and X to zoom into selections or out of selections. But you need to make sure this computer MIDI keyboard button up here is disabled, otherwise this hot key will not work. So if we wanted to work on this loop, we could highlight this loop and hit Z and it'll zoom in or hit X and it'll zoom back out. Tip number 11, typically when using a saturator, you need to increase the drive and decrease the output to compensate for the gain that the drive has added. Otherwise the signal simply gets too loud. Now, if you're doing this a thousand times a year, that can become pretty time consuming and annoying to do. Instead, you can use an inverse macro to achieve this. And I'll show you how to do that. Step one, load up your saturator and hit control G to group it. Then click on the macro tab over here. Then click on the map button. Click on your drive and map it to macro one. Click on your output and map it to macro one you'll see this macro mappings window open up over here. And here we can set the minimum and maximum values of each mapping. So for the drive, we want a minimum value of zero and a maximum value of 36. For the output, we want a minimum value of zero and a maximum value of negative 36. Now when we turn this macro, you'll see the drive increase and the output decrease. And we have automatic gain compensation. I then recommend cleaning this up by removing all the unused macros by clicking this minus button here, renaming this to drive, and then saving it as a rack. Thanks for watching. I hope this improved your workflow, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.